In this video, we're going to talk about crafting. So this is HUD number 7 in your RPG HUD screens. This is uh, being able to craft an item, I think, is paramount to any kind of RPG experience. So let's just jump right in. We've got my work shed right over here. And we are going to make a saw bat. That's a, a weapon type that's available in the um, Wasteland DLC. And uh, let's see, I've got some parts here in my junk heap that should work just fine. Let's take this. Let's take this. And let's take this. All right. I'll go over to the workbench. Oh, we're going to need the recipe too. I'll keep my instructions right there. And we're just going to bring up the menu. So this is just the out of the box menu. I'm not going to bother creating a custom special menu um, for this. We'll just drag that into the recipe slot. So that's where the recipe goes. And then these are the ingredients here. So we're just going to add the ingredients. Notice this just looks like a box. That's the gear that I picked up. And I'll explain why in a moment that it's just a little box. I'll drop that right in there. So we have our ingredients for the recipe. We'll click craft. And you hear it goes into my inventory. And it's still that little box. And again, I'll explain why in a moment. So... Now it's in my inventory. If I open my inventory, it's there. If I drag it into the uh, hotkeys, I have the item equipped and I can swing it. Okay. So uh, let me show you how that works. All right. So first of all, let's look at this. So here's the saw bat. Here's what we're making. And this is why we see a little box as the icon. It's because this item wasn't meant to be a craftable item. Uh, by design, it was meant to be a weapon. In fact, the behavior is a weapon, right? Um, and so um, if you want to change that, you would need to take, uh, maybe take a, a snapshot of this um, and put it in this image box. And then that would replace the little the box image so that uh, you can see what it's going to be like a preview image um, but I didn't do that primarily because I wanted to show you if you get this you know this is why okay um, so the item I labeled it Solbat 2k um, that's important because <clears throat> in this case if we look at uh, the Solbats there are four. There's Sawback Clean 2K, 4K, and then there's Sawback Gore 2K and 4K. So when I put in just Sawback, um, I ended up with the gory one, which seems a little weird. Um, why was it covered in blood all of a sudden? And so um, in order to get the one that I wanted, what I needed to do was name the item something specific. Um, so I, I just added the 2K there to be specific. You can name it whatever you want to. It really doesn't matter as long as it's a specific item. So just come up with some you know different name. The point is, is it needs reference back to what it is we're trying to create. Okay, so we're trying to create this. And this, by the way, is sitting on the, on the roof because the item has to be in the level somewhere. I wouldn't recommend necessarily hiding it you know nearby. I'm probably make a special spot at the level that players can't access where all the craftables and inventory and all the other stuff goes. Uh, but I needed it nearby for demonstration. So I just put it right up there. All right. So now we'll talk about the ingredients. Actually, let's talk about the recipe first. Let's look at the recipe first. So there's an item in here. It looks like a scroll. It really doesn't have to be this item. It could be anything, but there's a recipe item in there already. So I just grabbed that and put it here on the, on the uh, tool chest. And you'll notice that right away, the item description is Solbat 2K. So this is, what is it going to make? This is you know, the recipe for Solbat 2K specifically. Okay. Item cost, item value. We covered that in previous uh, episodes. It's the same thing. If you wanted to sell it, um, then that's what it would uh, amount to. Um, item container. Again, same works the same way with containers. It would just show up. The recipe would 
be in a container if the container existed. So if I wanted it to be in the tool chest as opposed to on top of the tool chest, I could have made that happen. Um, here you can see that I'm putting the ingredients here in the item ingredients slot. Notice that there's no space. So these are uh, separated by a comma with no space. And it's precisely what the items are named. So I just copied the name of the item um, and put them in there. So notice that bike gear knuckles doesn't have any spaces. So I didn't put any spaces, comma, no space, steel pipe worn has spaces. So it has spaces and so on. And then of course the item style, this is a recipe. Um, you can see that if you cursor over, it says such as a recipe or spell. So this same, you know, uh, item could also have been a spell and we'll cover spells in some other video, but, uh, now let's look at the ingredient items. So I've got my little junk pile over here. Now, again, this item is meant to be a weapon. And in fact, the behavior was weapon, but I changed it to collect object because it needs to be collectible, right? Um, so change it to collect object, uh, manual pickup for that. And also the recipe, uh, remember for all things, um, if you're going to have, if you're going to pick it up, then it needs to be collectible. So here in this, um, general section is collectible. I'm picking it up. Right. But this particular object is also a resource, right? Cause it's one of three things needed to craft something. So is resource needs to be checked as well. If it's going to be an ingredient for a recipe. Okay. Then you have to go to the collectible settings, which appears when you check this, uh, is collectible collectible settings appears and you just need to set this up <clears throat> with the name of the item. And again, I just took the, the name of the item right here and put it in there, uh, just as it was. And that's it. I didn't really change any, any other default settings here. Um, pretty much the same with, well, actually exactly the same with steel pipe worn, um, the behavior and the collect, uh, collectible settings and also the cog. Okay. So those three items I imagined could make up the, uh, the, the pipe bat. Maybe I should have put a baseball bat instead of a pipe. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just finding items, putting them in there. Like, yeah, it looks good. Okay. So, um, same thing with this recipe, it, uh, is collectible, right? It's not a resource, right? It's not used to create anything, it, uh, necessarily it's, it's the recipe itself. So it's collectible, has collectible settings, but in, uh, in this case, we're telling it, what is it crafting, right? That's the difference. All right. And then we have the workbench. Now. I used this vice as my crafting table. And the reason I did that is because this object is a static hull. And as you may know, we can't put a behavior onto a static hull. So I added the vice um, and changed that to a, a dynamic object so that I could add the behavior. So this is the crafting table behavior. Um, you can change the, you know, the, the range that, you know, the distance that your player can be at to use the item, um, the prompt that they'll get when they approach the item, the name of the screen that's going to show up, uh, when they, when they use the item, this part here actually kind of threw me for a loop craft container. <clears throat> now I thought that it, the craft container was going to be where the item would show up once it's crafted. And as you saw, it showed up in my inventory because of course it did. <laughs> right. Um, so what is that? Why did I have to put chest? I, I mean, it doesn't have to be the word chest. It could be anything. It could be your mom's name, whatever you want. It doesn't matter, but it has to have something. Why is that? Well, you were, you may remember, and I'll, I'll look at this here in a moment when we go and look at the actual uh, menu, but you may remember the bar where I dragged all of the ingredients into that panel, um, is, a, is essentially an inventory. It's essentially a container of a, of a, of a sort, right? Um, so it needs a container to be, uh, to work, right? I, I, when I didn't have something in this slot, 
I couldn't drag anything into that panel because there is no container for, for it to hold items into. It probably should be a unique name. Like if you had this item, uh, you know, this tool chest as a container, maybe you don't put tool chests because then it would show up in there or things that are in the tool chest would show up in that bar. I had that happen to me as well. <laughs> and so, um, you know, just make it a unique name, make it something different than any other container and you'll be fine. You can put a sound. I was going to put a sound to, honestly, I just forgot to, I was going to put a crafting sound like tink, 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 you know, stuff like that, but just forgot. Now there's one other thing I wanted to show you. And that's this humble little backpack over here. Now you don't have to use a backpack, um, but I chose to uh, because I, I imagined that you could like kind of put it on and carry it around. But this is a, a mobile crafting kit, right? So I want to I'm going to demonstrate this. I'm just going to walk over and pick up the backpack. So you can see I, I made a, a command there for you for the crafting uh, menu. And this is that bar I was talking about that is the container of sorts, the chest effectively. Um, so, but this item that I've picked up is a crafting table, right? And to demonstrate, I'm just going to grab all the little items. If I can, I got to get close to it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to walk away from... So I'm way, way away from that. I'm just going to press U to open the menu. And you can see that the menu comes up. Oops, let's put that in there. There we go. So I was able to craft the item. Drag that into my inventory. And away we go. So, um, so that is a portable crafting table as opposed to one that's stationary. Like, a, like the workbench, in case you want to do something like that. Um, the uh, portable item is set up similarly. Notice that I use the same word, chest. It doesn't matter because it, it's the same menu. So, of course, it would be the same container, right? Uh, everything else is basically the same. The only thing I did differently is this one I, I set to automatic pickup. So, I could just walk over and, and it would go on. All right. So, let's go and save that. And let's look at the HUD screen. So I'm going to go over this very quickly because we've covered pretty much all of this in previous uh, videos. Specifically, if you look at the inventory video, it explains the concepts behind uh, a, a user-defined global panel, an inventory panel, uh, a user-defined image, and so on. I explain all of that in, in other videos, so I don't want to bore you with that. This is, I'm just really bringing this up to show you that it's more of the same, right? We have an inventory craft, um, so that's the recipe. Um, this is craft title and craft ingredients. So these are just uh, user-defined global uh, text uh, that's going to show up. And then we have our panel here, which is inventory container. So remember, uh, we we created a container we evoked a container called chest and that's really all that's doing so if we hadn't done that it, this reference wouldn't make any sense we wouldn't be referencing a container that existed and that's why it wouldn't work okay and then these are just buttons this is returning the button id to lua and you know all the rest of this is very familiar so i won't bore you with all that Again, if you haven't seen those other videos, I would encourage you to do so. It'll make a lot more sense this part of the video. I don't mean to gloss over it, but it's it's just covered ground. So um, I don't want to I don't want to get too deep into that. So what's left? Troubleshooting. I had a rather difficult time uh, putting this video together because when I tried crafting for the first time, I didn't get it to work. I could not get it to work. And I had to go through some troubleshooting with my buddy Necrom. And uh, it took a while. It took a while to get to the answers to things. And I'll explain some of the problems that I had and the solutions that we came up with. Uh, so that if you run into these problems, um, then you'll be equipped to, to try to troubleshoot on your own as well. Um, I don't like 
covering tr like troubleshooting tips in a video like this because it's supposed to be a tutorial however i think it's important because i, I want you to feel successful in what you're doing and I want you to re remember that this is a point in time, right? Um, these menus and this crafting system will change and it will improve. There's a lot to be desired and there's a lot that's planned to change. So chances are look for uh, an updated video sometime in the, in the future on crafting. But for now, I need to make sure that you're well equipped to use the crafting system as it exists today. Okay. So let's talk about the troubleshooting steps. Uh, first of all, there are these files in your project bank and they're, uh, you, you can see them here in the documents folder. Um, just so follow this path here and you'll find these three, um, individual files. They're TSV uh, files. TSV is basically a comma delimiter, delimited file. So this is collection items. And you can see that basically it's creating this file in the background. It's recording the items. When you add a collection item, this is where it goes. This is effectively the database, right? And we're just opening it in Excel so we can uh, view it and, and look at it. If you have any trouble with the collection items, my advice to you is to go through and delete these three items in every project you have. Don't worry, it won't break anything. Just for every file that you have that has those, some of them won't. Some of them, sometimes you go in there and you just don't find them in there and that's okay. You know, hunt and find those uh, files wherever they may live and delete all of them close max and then reopen it what's going to happen is in the background it's going to generate those files for you just like it did because they need to exist and it'll write in there um, the objects that should be in the database it'll write that over again so it just refreshes those they're aware of this they're working on this once we have uh, proper project files this should be a thing of the past uh, but again point in time just be patient. Um, so that's trick number one. Um, but the other thing that I noticed is that sometimes these menus can play tricks on you as well. Um, so if that doesn't work, then the next thing I would try is resetting the HUDs. Um, so I would just uh, click that reset button and then add the RPG buttons back. Hopefully that, uh, does it mess you up too badly in terms of, you know, all the work that you may have done? I didn't do any work on these. These are just out of the box. And so it doesn't affect me. But if I had gone and made, you know, a, a pretty um, HUD screen and then had, ended up having to reset it, that would be rather frustrating. I understand. Um, but again, point in time, it's temporary. That's why maybe don't get too deep into that until you have it functional and then you can start you know, customizing it. Okay. So, so that's it. I just wanted to cover those basic tips, those troubleshooting tips for you, just in case those are the things I experienced anyways. Hopefully you don't experience it. Everything goes uh, fine, but just in case I wanted to cover that. Um, and that's it for the video. Uh, if you have any questions, please be sure to leave those in the comments below. Uh, I'm happy to, to, you know, work through any issues you may have and see if I can come up with a solution. I can't promise anything, but I'll try. Um, if you enjoyed the video, if you learned something new, uh, or if you just want to give me a, you know, a thumbs up, click the like button. It makes me feel good. I appreciate it. Um, and if you're new here, or if you haven't already subscribed, great time to do so. I'm going to be continuing to make videos, you know, a couple of weeks, probably. Um, there's no set schedule. So if you want a notification, click the bell icon. That's going to notify you anytime I post a new video. Okay. Uh, that's it. Thanks so much for watching all the way through. I really do appreciate that. That actually means a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.